Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I have a warning vision to share. It's Monday, July 20th, and it's 931. This is from Rhonda Empson. And this is not a dream, it's a vision. And uh, she said she hasn't had very many visions. But she got this one, well, she didn't say when, but it's dated July 19th. It's a warning for the East Coast. Vision. Repost. Okay, so maybe she had gotten it before and felt led to repost it. I don't remember her saying. But just looking at the map, she just kept showing this, you know, let me blow it up. The map shows South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, what looks like Maryland, and whatever that state is that hangs down from Pennsylvania, like into the water, which I believe Washington, D.C. is uh, in this area right here by this waterway that comes up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Washington, D.C. It's all gone. It's all underwater, and she saw the coastline come all the way up where these states used to be. So those of you, and I know of one at least, lives in this area, please share this video so that everybody can be praying for these people. And if you're in this area, be praying, fasting and praying what Father to confirm it, first of all, and what Father would have you to do. And if he says to move, you say where and how, and he will lead you. He will lead you and guide you in the way that you should go. This is going to be a time, we are in a time already of great faith. We have to have great faith. You can't worry about, well, how will I do this? Well, how will I ever, you know, survive? How will I get the kind of housing I have now? Uh, you know, what about my income? Like I know one of you is still waiting on your Social Security disability to be approved. Well, I don't know your answers, but God does. It could happen after the first rapture. So my suggestion to everybody is to pray that you be counted worthy, first of all, because this is a huge thing. This is huge destruction. And most likely from, well, she did say something about, uh, listen to Steve Denoon and his, um, report on the coming asteroids. We're going to go through an asteroid belt, supposedly. He said he did not get confirmation from NASA. But I remember I watched his video and he said he got conf he got his information from his source in Washington, D.C. Okay, and he's not the only one saying it. All right, so that's another thing you want to take in prayer because even though your state may not be pelted, or it's probably a tsunami that will take that out, I would think. But if we're going to be pelted by many, perhaps these are the stars Jesus was talking about. That when he, that, that, that message I shared with you, how there would we would see some destruction, then we would be taken, and then many more stars would fall. Perhaps these are the stars he was talking about, because that's kind of what they look like. Falling down, they look like a falling star. So that's just a, a theory that I have based on that message that I got, that maybe this asteroid belt composes the stars that would fall. I don't know. Perhaps he literally meant stars. But can you imagine? See, the stars are not what NASA's been telling us. We've been lied to for so long. 
Everybody thinks the Earth is round. It is going around like all the other planets. Those planets and stars are all above Earth. If you can imagine Earth as a big dish. And it's got a frozen wall around it which keeps the oceans in. Which is why everywhere you travel, whether north or south, beyond the land, you hit an ice wall. And you assume it's part of the, like I'm talking like y'all do this all the time, but if you did this, you would hit an ice wall and you would assume, oh, we're at the North Pole or we're at the South Pole. But you're at the edge and there's no way you're going to get beyond it. But as large as the Earth is, imagine a wall uh, firm the firmament past the ice is firmament like a big dome or like you're living in a big snow globe like you get at Christmas time you see these snow globes that you shake up and the snow falls onto a little village or something that's what we live in and they have been trying to shoot missiles through that firmament and they just bounce back, like hitting a big wall of jello. Now, I saw, I, I can't tell you how long ago, but it's been when Obama was president, Hillary Clinton said something. It was, of course, not put on mainstream media, I'm sure, saying something about trying to get through the wall. Get to, I'm trying to think how she worded it. Somebody may remember that and can put it in the comments. Alright, anyway. Um, all those stars up there are not huge like the sun. So that if they all fell on the earth, of course the heat of them is going to burn what... Because, see, the Lord said, I will never destroy the earth again with flooding, even though there will be flooding, like from the asteroids making tsunamis. He's not going to destroy the earth with flooding. It'll be with fire. The United States will probably get the majority of those, and then it'll burn us up. Uh, that's my theory. Okay, so I'm going to end this here, and I will I will link the video from Steve DeNoon about the asteroid belt if you want to watch it, if you haven't seen it already, and take it to the Lord, take it all to the Lord, pray about it. It's these are things. If you're in the line of fire, so to speak, you want to know: Does he want you to move? Or will you be gone already? If you have a real good sense of peace about it and not being told to move, then you know you're gone already. You're going to be gone already. I, don't, I have peace about it. I'm not worried about it at all. I don't feel any urgency to move. I don't even feel an urgency to pray about moving. So either that means I'm not <clears throat> in the line of fire or we're gone already. So that's what you need to do. You need to know for sure you're not in the line of fire. Or you need to move. Or we're gone already. Okay? I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Over the internet connection. Over myself and my computer. And over each and every single one of you. And all of your devices. And your internet connections. And let us keep each other in our prayers. Please, y'all. We need to be praying for one another. There are people that live that are brothers and sisters in Christ. They may not be subscribed to me. But I know of another lady that gets dreams and visions. And I haven't seen a video of hers for so long. And she lives in either South Carolina or North Carolina. So I pray that she still... If not on YouTube, doing some kind of ministry in her area where she'll hear from the Lord. 
she's probably still on here and I just don't ever get sent one of her videos. I can't even remember her channel name. So anyway, see there are people we just need to pray for them. We just need to pray a blanket prayer because there's so many people we don't know. We don't know their names. We don't know their situation. So let's pray a blanket prayer over the East Coast saying, Dear Heavenly Father, if there are any here that you want to move, we pray that you would tell them to move. Or if they're going to be taken in the first rapture, please give them peace about that. But there's not going to be that many. I can't say how many. A video I saw last night is saying, Two of the churches, two of the seven, so about 30%. Well, we'll see. I never thought it would be that many because I'm thinking 144,000 are the first fruits to God and His Christ. That's Revelation 14.4, and that may not be quoted exactly right. And it's at the end of that, it's a pretty long verse, Revelation 14.4. And that is people, it says virgin, but it's people who have made themselves holy and have not been defiled by women, which is worldly churches that are teaching false prophets, false gospels, false um, teachings, and people just love their church and will not come out of it, no matter if they hear us tell them, look, you need to come out of that church. They're teaching you lies. Oh, you, where'd you hear that? And if you say YouTube, they're going to say, you need to get off of that because they're just filling your head full of nonsense, stuff like that. That's what people think. Because they don't want to leave their church. They love the people in their church, which is good. They should. They're probably tithing a full 10% and more. Depending on what their pastor preaches. They may, you know, do this and that and the other to serve the church. But are they really serving God? I'm just saying... The Lord has been saying, come out of her, my people. Well, who do you think he means? Just the Catholic Church? Or do you think he means all the 501c3 churches that are teaching lies and not teaching the truth? Not teaching them about getting ready for the rapture? Not teaching them to, to uh, forgive one another and to repent? That's the biggie. We have to repent of our sins. We have to have a clean, spotless bridal gown, you could say, without spot or wrinkle. And the only way to accomplish that is for every single night or as soon as you realize, oops, I shouldn't have said that. That was not good. You repent, right? You ask forgiveness. Repent means to turn from, and that usually indicates a habitual sin that you do on purpose. I mean, ask for forgiveness, saying, Father, I'm sorry I said that to that person. I, if I could find him, I'd go back and apologize. I should not have been so mean and snappy to them, or whatever you did or didn't do. Did you walk by a homeless man with a bucket and not give him anything? And then later down the road, you think, oh, gosh, I should have put some money in his bucket. Even though I don't have much, I should have, I should have put something in that bucket. You see, you see, that's, that's a sin of omission, not doing something you should have done. All right. I'll end it at that. And with that, I'll say bye for now, y'all. I'll talk to you later.